So today is uh, 15th of September 2024 by Sri Radha Krishna's grace. Um, we are coming into eighth chapter. And um, so we have so far seen seven chapters. And so let us get into this eighth chapter, which is also known as um, Akshara Brahma Yoga. Akshara Brahma Yoga. And as usual, before we get into a new chapter, we see the context um, of uh, the previous chapter. And some of the chapters starts with Arjuna's question. Sometimes Bhagavan himself starts. Uh, the last, uh, right from five, six, seven, it was always straight away Bhagavan starting the teaching. Uh, right. So, in between, of course, Arjuna asked some few questions in number chapter six. So, but this chapter eight starts with Arjuna's question. So that means for us to kind of understand Arjuna's doubts, we have to see the context of the previous sloka a little bit before we get into this. And this is a very important chapter in the context that when it says Akshara Brahma Yoga, it is also called uh, in, our, in our terminology like an exit strategy. Like, you know, uh, it talks a lot about the antakalam, meaning to say the last breath we take and how we plan for our uh, ex 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 exit, plan for our exit of this shariram so that we make it fruitful up to the last breath. Okay. So but let's get to the previous context. Um, so I've also given you a uh, handout, uh, which I will share with you in this one. So... In the previous seventh chapter, Bhagavan said, Tatvit, tat, uh, tatvit Brahma Kritsnam, he said. Okay, let me just open that seventh chapter so you understand uh, what I mean. Um, tatvit Brahma, okay, I can just keep chanting. Jara Marana Mokshaya, Mama Shetya Yatantite, Te Brahma Tatvit Kritsnam, Adhyatmam Karma Chai, Tatvit Kritsnam. Tat Brahm Tatam Jara Marana Mokshaya Mama Shite Um Te Te Brahma Tat Vidu Kritsam Te Brahma Tat Vidu Kritsam meaning to say Brahma Kritsam Tat Viduhu it said Te Brahma Tat Viduhu Kritsam Kritsam means in totality Viduhu means no Te Te means here what those jnani. So the Bhagavan's context in this shloka is again for the jnani bhakta. So we keep that context of the four bhakta we've been always in saying. So that jnani bhakta, how does he get to know that Brahma Kritsnam? In totality, that Brahman, the ultimate supreme consciousness of Bhagavan, Viduhu, get to know that having been engaged in this existence of his work, and everything that Bhagavan, I said, we will be putting some aphorisms in that chapter that we said, Adhyatmam, Karma Chakilam, Karma, Sa Adi Bhutam, Sa Adi Bhutam, Sa Adi Devam, Sa Adi Yagyam. Then he said, Prayana Kale Pichamam, Te Vidu Yukta Chetasaha. So in totality, not only that Brahma Tat Viduhu, he introduced this terminology, Adhyatmam, Karma, Though karma is always be there, but in that context, karma, adi bhutam, adi daivam, adi yajna, etc. So Arjuna caught hold of all of them. And also he says, prayana kalecha. So Arjuna has now caught that questions into this, uh, that context of those aphorists, aphorismic or that kind of an encrypted phrases of words that Bhagavan used in the previous chapter. So first, first is we will, I will chant and then we were to spot that seven questions in this. First is to understand Arjuna's seven questions in this chapter. Then get to the seven answers and then just not get the answers. What is the connection between the seven answers? We have seven questions. First we will spot that. Then we get the seven answers. Then how the seven answers are related to one another. So that you know the Brahman in totality. So there is a relation between these questions. They are not sporadic questions fired here and there. And then Krishna has answered. So there is some relation between these seven. 
which will also we will see. Maybe in today's class, we may not be able to see all the relation, but it is very important to take those relations of these words because these seven words will only come in this uh, eighth chapter, like Adi Bhutam, Adi Agyam, Adi Atmam and all. But these terminologies are very important in our quest of knowing the uh, Brahman. Mm. So, first I will stand. Arjuna Uvacha Kim Tat Brahma Kim Adhyatmam Kim Karma Purushottamam Adi Bhutam Cha Kim Proktam Adi Daivam Kim Uchyate Adi Yajnyah Katham Kotram Dehesmin Madhusudhanam Prayanakale Cha Katham Ye Yosi Niyatatma Bihi I'll chant once more. Arjuna Uvacha Kim Tat Brahma Kim Adhyatmam Kim Karma Purushottamam Adi Bhutam Cha Kim Proktam Adi Devam Kim Uchyate Adi Yajnyah Katham Kotram Dehesmin Madhu Sudhanam Prayana Kale Cha Katham Ye Yosi Niyatatma Bihi so there are about 28 words in this. 28 words compressing of seven questions. So let's just, I will, I've shared you that. So we will do with that because then it is easy because if I only keep on doing these two phrases here on the screen, you may not be able to exactly get that phrases of questions. So let me, let me, uh, I think I shared you that. <laughs> okay. So I have broken that into this. So it's easy for us, to, for you to understand the question. Hey, Purushottama. Meaning to say, hey, hey, oh, uh, Lord Arjuna, sorry, Lord Krishna, Purushottama, uh, pur, Uttama Purushaha, Purushottama. Meaning to say, he is the ultimate of all beings. Uh, so, hey, Purushottama, uh, Tat Brahma Kim. Number one question, Tat Brahma Kim. What is that Brahman? Very simple, right? Tat Brahma Kim. Ah, so, and this is uh, the kind of the subject matter as well for this uh, chapter. And there is also one word Akshara, which is also introduced. And Bhagavan will came, come to the answer with that one. So, this question, Brahma, plus Bhagavan answer saying that that Aksharam is Brahman. So, that's why it's called Akshara Brahma Yoga. So, the chapter's name also is originating from the first question and the first answer of Bhagavan. We will see the answer one by one later. Ah, and but then uh, the second uh, question uh, Arjuna is asking, Adhyatmam Kim. What is that you are saying? Adhyatmam, Adhyatmam. Now, in all these words, you must see there is a prefix called Adi. Adi plus Atman becomes Adhyatmam. Dha plus A becomes Dhyā. Dhyā. It's called Yansandhi. It's just a Sanskrit way of joining two words. So it becomes Adi Atmam, Adi Atma. Ah, and the Adi Atmam becomes that, uh, what is that, right? So Adhyatmam. So there is, in all these words, when we say Adi Atmam, Adhyatmam, the, with the prefix when it is added, the meaning also a little bit changed and that meaning Bhagavan will say. Okay. So, Adhyatmam Kim. That's the second answer question Arjuna is asking. And then he is asking, Karma Kim. What is this Karma Karma we are trying? There's a theory of Karma. There is a Karma Yoga. So, you know, but then in this context, Bhagavan want, Arjuna wants to know. So, we should not 
take it like oh bhagwan has already taught him karma yoga and now he is asking why is karma kim he is asking in relation to the to knowing the totality of brahman what is the context of karma in this context that i should know and we know like when we did karma yoga that karma is any action actions are done by everything in this world and actions are of voluntary and involuntary nature and even with the voluntary nature of actions there is only three modes one can do the action one the right manner one in the wrong manner or not do at all arjuna remained in the tushni babu he neither did the right nor the right because he sat dropping the bow or so then how does these all actions come into this picture that's the kind of context i'm going to do give you that okay so there is some functional aspect of the actions coming into this karma means itself there is some transaction going so he wants to know what is this karma which has got some kind of a transaction between all of this because i am sowing some seed something is giving my fruit but then that is also going to somebody else or it is going to the external world the external world actions are coming into me so the karma is like a interwoven web so he wants to know what in this brahman concept what that karma is then adi bhutam saadi bhutam cha daivam maam bhagavan said so sa adi bhutam saha saha means it was used so he wants to take all the saha to know that in totality so what is bhutam means you know it's a being but adi bhutam what is that bhutam that is in totality of adi bhutam adi bhutam proktam chakim that you you mentioned about it proktam that adi bhutam proktam you have i was told of this adi bhutam what is that that's it very simple adi bhutam proktam you told me this adi bhutam chakim what is that one that's all Mm. and we also know bhutam as the the five gross elements of this earth wind water fire but there's some adi also introduced into that so what is in that one also bhagavan wants to know arjuna and then adi devam kim uchyate uchyate means kim uchyate what is what, what is told of this particular word called adi devam and always see this is one thing very much we must remember in our sanatana dharma when we say daivam it is related into so many contexts different different meaning one we can say daivam as ishwara nits ishwara we normally call daivam means ishwara and also daivam means the even the ultimate brahman sometimes can be called daivam divine then we also called about anything divine in the realm of sansa daivam and sometime even fate is called daivam so it, the daivam words they varies for example something has happened you know and towards oh this is a daiva uh, karya we need to say this is a destined so sometime daivam is also taken as destiny ah huh. so but to get to that and now there's a prefix called adi on to that one adi daivam <laughs> so that means there are some divinic divine aspects in this whole transaction of brahman ah, what is that adi devam kim uchyate that i should know along with this brahman he madhusudana and again there is the next line so he madhusudana atra meaning to says atra means in this atra asmin atra kutra where asmin dehe in this body physical body adi yajna kaha what is that adi yajna in this body kaka katam and how does it come forth what is this ha ah, so in so that bhagavan said saadi yajnam cha devam maam hmm. so all these things are important he says asert he has said adi devam but there is also he has said as adi yajna so what is that as well this word in this in this particular context of brahman that you said and it is also a a locative context asmin dehe in this body so in this body mean in this context of my existence arjuna is asking 
or your existence or every body of existence. There is Adi Yajnaha. What is that exist existential factor in every being? Which has got a body. It could be a tree as well. And Katam. How does it, what is it, what, what, Katam, how did it come about or how did it go? And there is some kind of an existential um, uh, fact that I want to know. Ah. And having known all these six, you said, Antakale Chamam Muktva, he said. Ah. And uh, what did he say, the last one, the seventh chapter? Um, he said as well, right? Ye Vidur Te Krishnam. So he is asking, Prayana Kale Pichamam Te Vidur Yukta Chetha Saka. The seventh one, last one. So that Prayana Kale means, Prayana Kale means, normally means the, the journey of your time. Prayana Kale. Prayana means you are going to depart. It's a departure launch. Like, you know, when you leave or whenever you depart, there is a departure time. So Prayana Kale means the departure time. Or during the starting the journey. Ah. During the journey, we don't call it normally prayana kal. So there is some journey we all take. What journey? The ultimate journey. What is that ultimate journey? When I when I drop this body and go. And Bhagavan said, because this prayana kalam has been always been said in all the right from um, chapter two, and that's a speciality of Bhagavad Gita, and this will form a very big. Context in this chapter, Prayana Kala. Meaning to say, the exit strategy. Pray, because he, Bhagavan he entered the seventh chapter with that. Prayana Kale Pichamam. He Vidur Yukta Che. Prayana Kala. Api. Api means up to that last breath. So that means that last breath is so important. Arjuna caught that. Please catch that. Because it's a very important clue that will come in this chapter, full chapter. And if we are to plan for that exit, that last minute, this chapter is the right one. Because Bhagavan not only give you that um, the way the departure happens, how to prepare for the departure, and that Bhagavan will say that memory, what is in your when you are when 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 you are put into an ICU, when everything is breathing, you do not know. At that time, something happens in their consciousness. That is very important. Bhagavan says, "Prayana kale cha niyatatma bihi katham ye yaha." Niyatatma bihi means that people who have taken lot of efforts, not only in this birth, in previous so many births. So this could be my, you know, uh, seven, six million nine hundred and eighty-seven thousand some birth. But that all the niyatat may be he, for all that thing that I have uh, carried forward in this last breath, katham yeyaha asi. How does he get to know the Lord at that end minute? Katham yeyaha asi. How does that Brahman get to be known? Through that breath, through that last breath. I mean, we should not think that okay, the last breath that's going to be a flash of lightning and there's going to be a miracle, and then he's going to see. No, no, Bhagavan is not talking about any miracle in the last breath. You should not keep that. But the smaranam is what Bhagavan is saying. He will give you the answer subsequently. But if you get these seven questions right, so when you go and chant this again, please try to spot the seven questions first. So in this half an hour, I have only given the questions, the context of each and every question for knowing that ultimate Brahman. Revise this again and again and again. The amount of energy, the time you spent in investing in this as God returns in many, many births to come. And then what about the answer that Bhagavan is going to give? And the connections of those answers if that can be made so strong in our thing, what, what kind of benefit we may get? So let's go to the Bhagavan's answer. Shri Bhagavan Uvacham Shri Bhagavan Uvacham Aksharam Brahma Paramam 
ಸ್ವಭಾವೋಧ್ಯಾಯ ಮುಚ್ಯತೆ ಭೂತ ಭಾವೋದ್ಭವಕರ ನಿಸರ್ಗ ಕರ್ಮ ಸಂಗೀತ ಆದಿಭೂತ ಕ್ಷರೋ ಭಾವ ಪುರುಷಾಧಿ ದೈವತ ಆದಿಯೋಹಮೇವಾತ್ರ ದೇಹೆ ದೇಹ ಭೃತಾಂಬರ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ದರ್ ಆರ್ ಟೂ ಲಾ ಟೂ ಶ್ಲೋಕಾಸ್ ಇನ್ ಕ್ವಶನ್ಸ್ ಆನ್ಸರ್ ಕಮ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ಟೂ ಶ್ಲೋಕಾಸ್ ಶ್ರೀ ಭಗವಾನ್ ಉಚ ಅಕ್ಷರ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ಪರಮಂ ಸ್ವಭಾವೋಧ್ಯಾಯ ಮುಚ್ಯತೆ ಭೂತ ಭಾವೋದ್ಭವಕರ ನಿಸರ್ಗ ಕರ್ಮ ಸಂಹಿತ ಆದಿಭೂತ ಕ್ಷರೋ ಭಾವ ಪುರುಷಾಧಿ ದೈವತ ಆದಿಯೋಹಮೇವಾತ್ರ ದೇಹೆ ದೇಹ ಭೃತಾಂಬರ ಸೊ ಭಗವಾನ್ ಆನ್ಸರ್ ಬಿಫೋರ್ ಐ ಗೋ ರೈಟ್ ಇನ್ ಟು ದ ಶ್ಲೋಕ ಶುಡ್ ಐ ಗಿವ್ ಯು ದ ಆನ್ಸರ್ ಅಂಡ್ ದೆನ್ ಡೂ ದ ರಿಲೇಷನ್ ಆರ್ ಗೆಟ್ ಓಕೆ ವಿಲ್ ಡೂ ದ ಆಸ್ ಯೂಶುವಲ್ ದ ಅನ್ವಯಂ ಅಂಡ್ ದೆನ್ ಗೋ ಸೊ ಫಾರ್ ದ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಕ್ವಶನ್ ಆಫ್ ಅರ್ಜುನ ಕಿಂ ತತ್ ತತ್ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ಕಿಂ ಭಗವಾನ್ ಸೇಟ್ ಅರ್ಜುನ ಪರಮಂ ಅಕ್ಷರಂ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ see these are all very minute thing you must understand as krishna as a teacher he doesn't beat around the bush kim tat brahma paramam aksharam brahma on the spot that is the quality of a teacher right he doesn't the right question gives answer straight away he doesn't weave a big magical web and you know takes a long time to he comes to the point and this you will see repeatedly in many parts of bhagavad gita chapter 14 it will be a very complex question but answer will be spot on immediate that is the quality of a teacher that is why he is called jagat guru naam jagat guru and then he will expand it but that's the beauty of krishna as a teacher sometimes you must see this teaching aspect which is very unique in bhagavad gita you will not get it in many many places this is very unique in uh, bhagavad gita and that is because krishna himself is the teacher that's uniqueness he gives the answer right spot and so what first one he says is arjuna paramam aksharam brahma so the answer to what is brahma paramam aksharam <coughs> here <coughs> paramam is the adjective adjective to aksharam <coughs> so you should not think the brahma answer is paramam paramam is an adjective to aksharam <laughs> that's why i put paramam first paramam aksharam is equal to brahma that's the answer we saw like para prakriti right para prakriti so that means there is an ultimate aksharam paramam brahm aksharam brahma because brahma is in napumsaka lingam so that's why paramam is an aksharam napam sakalingam and aksharam is also napam sakalingam or neutral gender that's why it's called paramam their prakriti was uh, feminine gender that's why it's called para prakriti that's just a sanskrit thing otherwise meanings are same so do not think para and paramam there is a difference no para means it is for feminine gender because prakriti is in feminine gender it became para prakriti here aksharam is uh, neutral gender so it is paramam but parama means that's a superlative super the ultimate right because there is nothing above than that so that paramam aksharam brahma first i will give you the answer in that context then we will see the meaning then we have to see some interconnection <laughs> which we will see but again i will do it next class because you need to get that so clear in your mind if you get that clear concept i am very happy okay next one is he asked adhyatmam kim adhyatmam kim right here what is this one tat brahma kim ha ah, next one was five where is it adhyatmam kim adhyatmam five and six adhyatmam kim for the second question straight away second answer swabhavah adhyatmam uchyate so what is the answer to adhyatmam 
Swabhavaha. So Bhagavan says, Adhyatmam is equal to Swabhavaha. Uchyate, it has been said. So Krishna says, Arjuna, Adhyatmam is normally called as Swabhavaha. I am only going to give you the answers, then we will see the meaning. Okay. And because that is an akshara, okay, we will give you the meaning. Once we see the answer, then we will go, go more. So, swa bhavaha. Swa means, um, uh, and also here when we see akshara, akshara can be taken as letter, right? Letter is also, a, a word is called, so called akshara. Do we take that? No. Here there is some more intrinsic meaning to this word akshara, which we will see. So, akshara. Akshara means to deplete. A negates it. So there is a non-depleting Brahman, non-depleting entity, which never fades or which never. So that is um, immutable. It's actually the right word is immutable. So that is the in English meaning to Aksharam, but we will see that more. And then Adhyatmam, Arjuna asked, Adi Atmam, right? And he said Swabhavaha. So that means for every individual context, identity, there is a Swabhavaha. Today there are five of us in this class, so there are five Swabhavaha. And that five Adhyatma. That is Bhagavan said Swabhavaha, meaning to say an individual context of existence. An individual context of existence by which you are existing and transacting. This much you take it, then we will go more. Ah. So, Swabhavaha Adhyatma Vuchyate. And then he says, uh, the third question was um, here. So afterwards, you please see this back and forth, okay? And then after that, uh, eight, nine, Adi Bhutam, number nine, Adibhutam, uh, Adibhutam Proktam Chakim. So the four, third question was Adibhutam Proktam Chakim. And Adibhutam, so there is a Bhutam we know, the five gross matters. And what Bhagavan says, who, Bhagavan, we, okay, we here Bhagavan goes into a different one. Visargaha Karma Sangitaha. No, Adhyatm Kimuchate, then Ah, Bhuta Bhavot Bhavakaraha Visargaha Bhuta Bhavot Bhavakaraha Visargaha Karma Sangitaha. So here the karma was Arjuna's uh, third question. Correct. Correct. That's why third. Yeah. Karma Kim Karma Kim. That is the third question, right? If you see that one, okay, it's not there. Yeah, so he asked the third question was karma kim. So what Bhagavan said, bhuta bhavot bhavakaraha visargaha karma sangitaha. The whole thing is the answer for the third question. So bhuta bhava ut bhavakaraha. We need to say, Udbhava Karaha means that which comes, brings it to existence. Udbhava. That which brings it to instrument. Which one? Bhuta Bhava. That gross matter which comes into, makes it to, comes into existence. For that, there is a Visargaha is what is known as Karma. So Karma is equal to Visargaha. But this Bhuta Bhavod Bhavakaraha is the adjective to Visargaha. Like how we said Paramam is the adjective to Aksharam. So that means first I must understand what is Visargaha so that I can afflict the or get this adjective into that one. Hmm. So basically what Bhagavan is saying, Ar Arjuna, it is by this action that there is a Bhuta Bhavod Bhavakaraha. That means there is a Birth after death after birth after birth happens. It is because of your actions, there is a rebirth happening. That's a simple English word. Arjuna, actions are nothing but the seeds for your rebirth. In simple term. But we will go deep into that. Okay. 
because visargava means that is you something you oh, you 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 dip, yeah, you 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 know when we say the uh, uh, visarjanam after puja that is something that you are given out into the nature even back into this world good bad ugly whatever and that reaction you must take it for that you must take a birth again the energy or the the matter that you have expended in this world will come back to you as good or bad as how we have sown the seeds hmm. so bhuta bhava utbhava karaha every action that we sow so uh, what does karma happens in karma you every action you are sowing the seeds i am sowing the seeds now while talking and you are sowing some seeds in listening Ah, so they are not uh, gone waste, and that is what again we go into the karma yoga. If that uh, seeds are sh sown as to Krishna, then they are releasing you from a rebirth. So Bhagwan have come come into this again. The karma yoga is joined into that, but when not done as a karma yoga, it gives you back to. Come back to existence. That is what Bhagavan says. Bhuta bhava ha, utbava karaha. That is what is visarga ha. That you have sown a seed. Visarga means that you have sown a seed yeah, by action. That you have to reap and that you be born again. That is what is called karma. So the karma theory is very well explained here in one uh, one uh, phrase by Bhagavan. And then the fourth question was, what is Adibhutam? Right? So let us also see that Kim Uchate, Karma Kim Uchate, then nine, Adibhutam. That's the fourth question. So you are with me in that, right? We are come to the fourth question. Adibhutam, Proktam, Chakim. Right? Adibhutam, Proktam, Chakim. What is being told of Adibhutam? What is that? And Bhagavan says, Adibhutam Khara Bhavaha. Kharo means Khara Bhavaha. Adibhutam Arjuna, it is of a depleting nature. Bhavaha means it's a nature. What is Bhutam? That Bhutam of these five, anything, my body, your everything, that even mind is a kind of an Adibhutam. It's a Jada. Anything that is a Jada Vastu, it is of a Khara Bhavaha that it is of a nature of constant depletion. It's always in the decaying. It is always expanded to a state of non-existence because totally it's not destroyed, but it's a form that it is mod modification continuously happening. So Kshara Bhavaha means there is a modification to its non-existence happening all the time. Everything in this world, even a great mountain, Great ocean, everything it is going into a sharabhavaha. Sharabhavaha means into a matter of modification which changes its name and form into different. That is the nature of Adibhutam. So Adibhutam is always in the nature of modification by due to which there is a depletion happening all the time. And the fifth question Bhagavan asked, Arjuna asked was, uh, Adi Devam. Adi Devam Kim Uchate. So I said Adi Devam. And Bhagavan said, Purushas Cha Adi Devatam. Purushaha is the Adi Devam Tham. That Adi Devam is equal to Purushaha. Adi Devam is equal to Purushaha. So here again, this Purushaha, all these things, because we have heard Purusha Suktam, then we say Purusha is also sometimes Ishwara. But what is this Purusha in this terminology that we must also know? So Shankara gives two, three meanings in this one. That, that Adi Daivam, it is in the name of Purusha, meaning to say that which is Purnat, um, Purnam, that is, Purna means, you know, it is completely filled up, right? So, in this gross matter, subtle matter, what 
the uh, the entity that is completely pervaded that is purushaha that is purushaha in the context of existence so purnaha uh, uh, that is one thing and then he says puri shayanatva purushaha meaning to say he remaining in this body gives us this energy gives us this ability gives us this capability to function that is adi devatam hmm. so he is the he is the one by which he is blessing everyone to do anything everybody it could be even wasama bin laden even if he is getting any ability to do a, a most uh, a drastic action in this world for him also it is the same thing but he has exercised it in a wrong manner right manner but that ultimate factor which is which is giving you that one is that purusha in simply hmm. so that is uh, uh, that is a fifth uh, fifth question fifth answer and the sixth one अत्र अस्मिन् देहे अदि यज्ञः या या अदि यज्ञः अत्र अस्मिन् अस्मिन् हाँ अस्मिन् अस्मिन् देहे या अस्मिन् देहे हाँ ये मधुसूदर जो आपने आस्ते में राइट अम्म अत्र अस्मिन् देहे अदि यज्ञः कहा एंड कथम so this adi yajna is actually the yajyam by vishnu that that ultimate ishvara that ultimate ishvara who is then giving you the bless the the, the factor by which you are also able to give it back to him who is there nearby to help you for moksha because that's why it is yajyo vai vishnu that ishvara who is in the form of in a name and form that you can cognize that you can do devotion that is all adi yajna the transactional form of that ishvara who is there in you to bless you and also to give you that moksha in in a, in a very transactional manner the bhakti that is all is adi yajna you understand the difference we will go in more deep i will show you one visual thing today in the last 5 minutes and then we will uh, do it and last question he asked was prayana kale cha katam yeya asi last one and bhagavan says anta kale cha mameva अंत काले च मामेव स्मरण मुक्तवा कलेवरम यह प्रयाति समत भावम याति नास्तत्र समशया हा भगवान से अंत का वर्ण सोर अंत काले च मामेव स्मरण मुक्तवा कलेवरम यह प्रयाति समत भावम याति नास्तत्र समशया हा सो ही सेस एंड आदि एक यह आल्सो ही सेस देहे देह ब्रताम बरा ही इज़ द वन who is also the upholding sustenance in this whole world adi yajna and bhagavan sen he said antakale cha mameva even up to the last minute what if you are to think about me that ishwara who is that means if i have to remember him it should be in the name and form that we must not forget it हम्म सो नाम जब नाम जब बोलेगा तो नाम कुछ नाम होना चाहिए ना यू कैन नॉट से आई कैन चेंज सम नाम सो एवरीबॉडी हैज गॉट अ नाम इवन इफ दे से दैट दे दे ईश्वर इज फॉर्मलेस बट ही आल्सो से अल्लाह हु अकबर सम सम नेम ही सेस राइट एवरीबॉडी हैज गॉट अ नेम दैट मींस इफ देयर इज अ नेम दैट मस्ट बी अ फॉर्म बट ओनली थिंग इज यू कॉम्प्रिहेंड समथिंग एवरीबॉडी इन हिज ओन माइंड मस्ट बी कॉम्प्रिहेंडिंग समथिंग and that bhagwan says that antakale cha mameva smaran that is why smaran smaran karo abhi if you see in um, uh, sikhism the smaran ka bahut uh, importance is see that is why a lot of them their name is simran because that 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 um, you know that 
remembrance up to the last minute is the real important thing and bhagavan says even that last breath if you were to remember my name and form and call me and if it is completely within you kalevaram before you leave depart yaprayati samadbhavam yati you will certainly come unto me na astra na astra samshaya do not have even one atom of doubt in that arjuna and then so i've given you answer next class again we will go this in detail because i want you to only after this class before come to next class i don't know next class will i have anyway it's okay next class we'll see next class um we will see the more into the detail of the uh, um but i want you to go into all the seven questions spot the seven questions spot the seven answers that's very important and to next class what we will do <laughs> once i show you the interconnection of these ones in more detail you will know how this chain of things happens i will briefly give you in the next 5 minutes so that um, i will also share you so what bhagwan says this answer number 1 brahman if we know brahman is the topmost in the whole chain of cycle hmm that brahman is the absolute immutable consciousness which we say sachidananda swarupam Ah, uh, which is the ultimate consciousness, which is in every one of us, and which is nothing in this world is there except even the jada vastu. Everything is Brahman. So there is this world means the whole world. Anything is Brahman. So that we know is the aksharam Brahman. So it's a non-depleting because everything is there. It's infinite. How can you make it finite? So that infinite is that entity is called aksharam Brahman. That aksharam is a Brahman here, and. then bhagwan he says adi yagnya ha so the adi yagnya ha is the number 2 where the same brahman we saw that ishvara to such an extent you can take it adi yagnya ha because that antakale ch smaran mave that that i told you so the antakale ch mame what is that mam adi yagnya ha so the number 7 is related to number 2 because why even when you do the karma you say yajna arthat karmano yatra yajna arthat what yajyam vai vishtu so i am doing the action all the time remembering about that god but that ishwara krishna arpanam uh, ram arpanam shiva arpanam jagadamba arpanam and i am remembering all that one and that gives me that antakara smaran and the antakara smaran gives me that ishwara and that is the karma mukti which is the essence of this chapter <clears throat> so to get to the functional one the adi yajna ha <clears throat> is the one i told you who blesses you with this adhyatmam the indwelling consciousness adhyatmam is also like the reflected consciousness by which that identity comes so it is the indwelling consciousness pervading and giving you the individual context i am sashi i am yatish i am krishna kumar i am devina that identity is important otherwise you can't do action if this is not that you can't do action and for this to function the, you need you need two things as well adi bhutam you may have the eye context but if this body depletes you have nothing so adi bhutam gross which comes from the brahman from the adi yajna who, who because he creates it adi bhutam has got a name and form and that comes from adi yajna and that adi bhutam is what given you this adhyatmam something to function to karma we will go this detail next class but uh, and i will share this and adi devam so there is a physical aspect of existence and there is a divine aspect of existence for example the suri bhagwan the, the even the direction is a devam adi devam the everything agni vayu everything the divine realm of existence i told you without which you cannot get anything to function so all the divinic aspects in this one which is also from the ishwara who blesses you also to function this as an individual that is adi daiva ah and then with which this individual context having been blessed by him uh, um, same brahman as the sachidananda your uh, uh, reflected consciousness with the gross body 
with the divine existence and then you do the karman and the karman what do you do if you do it as antakala smaranam with the complete yajnartha then it's a karma mukti but wherein if you have not done it as we have done the karma as visarga meaning to say with a desire that if i have not done the karma then you be born again and take another adhyatma very simple as far as this is even 1% is done as visarga bhuta bhavod bhavakaraha visarga karma sangitaha so if i am getting the next context because next adhyatman your name could be different my name could be different or your existence can be who knows our gender may be different who knows we don't even know could be born as if you are have if you are born as a human being that's a big uh, blessing so what the next adhyatma we do not it depends upon the visarga you understand and for that also there is adi bhutam different different adi devam important everything is important and that is what is adhyatma adhyatma so this is the entity relative uh, diagram which kind of makes you an understanding into this and then place every answer of this bhagavan's question into this uh, uh, one and see you will be able to get more meaning out of it i'm not saying this is limited to this this is just something little that i comprehended and i try to put it so that you know it is easy but i put lot of other upanishads and everything but i didn't want to do that i just wanted to keep to this shloka so that we get a very simple matter and then i let you expand more on that if you would like to theek hai na so with that i will finish today's chapter this one I'll share this one as well. Om Tat Sat. Ah, so we will um, Om Tat Sat. It is Sri Mat Bhagavad Gita Su Upanishad Su Brahma Vidya Yam Yoga Shastra Sri Krishna Arjuna Sambhade Akshar Brahma Yoga Nama Ashtamo Dhyaya. And um, this Krama Mukti in this particular thing is very very nice. and uh, so you know we will um, see more in this chapter this chapter is also very nice as i said you know um, preparing is for the ultimate one so with that i will um, i will stop the recording and stop the sharing and if you got any doubt yes please ask me